grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So good to see all of you gathered here this morning. Somebody left a bag of Hawkeye M&Ms up here uh, for us. <laughs> You're lucky I like M&Ms. I'll give these to Sarah. <laughs> and, and look, your liturgist, Jeff, uh, is wearing a Hawkeye shirt. Uh, and our sermon today is about forgiveness. It's actually about seeking and saving the lost. <laughs> We have several announcements today. Um, one of the first ones is a, is a prayer concern. Uh, Carolee Beams, Carolee Beams is having knee surgery Monday afternoon, and she uh, just requests prayers from folks. So she's uh, going to have that, and she just had a pacemaker put in. So for those of you who know Carolee, she's moved up with her son Joe Beams up near Monticello, and so um, she's not here for us to see all the time, but. Uh, she's requested prayers. And then our freezer died in the, in the kitchen. And so Session has formed a freezer task force, the freezer force, to, to purchase a new, a new freezer for the kitchen. And uh, we are so grateful that God works in such mysterious ways that it didn't die before spaghetti supper, but waited until the two weeks after, before it went, and it did go, and leaked everywhere as soon as it went. So uh, you may hear some freezer talk. Um, all right, several announcements today, Sarah. We have book study. Yeah, we're starting our Bad Girls of the Bible book study tonight um, at 6 o'clock, and you are welcome even if you have not gotten the book yet or just have interest and want to try it out. And I would also ask that you bring your Bibles, because these are bad girls of the Bible, and we will be opening our Bible during the book study. Um, and then I also have the special needs support group that's starting tomorrow night. This will be a monthly meeting, um, and we'll start tomorrow night at 6 o'clock in Peter's room. And then my last announcement is uh, we are heading into our second week of Revolution. This is our Wednesday afternoon program. Um, I'm looking for two adult rovers for this Wednesday to fill those spots. And if you um, have a time in the future that you would like to serve in that way, um, the sign-up sheet in the gathering space table is um, open until December. So you can pick a date and come and hang out with the kids. Thanks, Sarah. And we have our first confirmation class today. And so they'll be meeting down in the, in the fellowship hall, and then Kurt Swarm has an announcement. Good morning. Uh, well, once again, it's uh, the food drive. The deacons uh, have a food drive uh, for the Fellowship Cup and uh, Tolson Community Center, and the sacks are out there. You all know about those sacks. And... Uh, list of food items is on each sack and uh, if you take that list into the grocery store to fill those items could you uh, like put the list back in the sack so so we know which sack goes to uh, where but the sacks are out there and let's have a, a good uh, a fall food drive okay thank you thanks adam and i'm going to be loud from here and i don't know if it was announced last week but first of all i want to say a huge thank you to everybody that helped with the parking lot during old freshers um, uh, tally total from what we earned ten thousand nine hundred and eighty seven dollars so thank you thank you and then we have our social justice class today it was going to meet last week but uh folks had some stuff to do so social justice class will be today, and they will meet in Peter's room, which is the first classroom on the right if you're going down the hallway. That's Peter's room, and that's where the social class, the social justice class will meet. And then next week, we have a potluck. We are going to worship in the fellowship hall, 
And then after church, we're going to have a potluck lunch. That's one of the reasons why I'm still in a church today, because I love potlucks. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the committee, the parish life committee is baking a small ham, but bring any meat dish, side dish to share in your own table service. If you forget your own table service, we'll, we'll have some extra there for, for everybody. And so uh, please come and stay. We're going to do uh, some special worship things. And we're going to hear from some of the um, committees and commissions who are doing work in the church. So we'll hear from uh, about the All God's Creatures initiative. We'll hear about the Building Dreams and Bridges, which was the fundraising we did or the mission giving we did when we did the renovations for this end of the church. We'll hear an update about that. And we'll hear from Iowa Winds and some others. So. Uh, please come and join us next week for a potluck and for some fellowship, extended fellowship, and the fellowship hall for worship. Those are all of the announcements that I have. Are there any other announcements? Okay, let us center our hearts and minds to worship God. So Rob and Devil booked yourself to be the liturgist and help with PEO today, so you guys are stuck with me. Uh, let us stand as we are able and join me in the call to worship. We gather in the house of God as disciples searching to become more like Christ. This is the place where we search to find hope and new beginnings. Jesus said those who search for his wisdom will find it. Come, Holy Spirit, enliven yourself to our hearts and minds as we search for the way of Christ.
seated. So the call to reconciliation, Romans 5, 8, and Hebrews 4, 16. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sin before God and one another. The units in prayer of forgiveness. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be, so that we may abide in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Let us continue to confess our personal sins in silence. the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Thanks be to God for this good news. We are called as friends forgiven as sinners, and sent back as servants. seated. Please join me in prayer. O oh Lord, our God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth and faith and love, that we may be obedient to your will and live always for your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. The first lesson is Psalm 51, verses 1 through 10. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my inequity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my inequities. 
Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. The word of our Lord. distracted we had a, a 
there was a young mother sitting over here with a couple of children. Yeah. Did she go down to the nursery? Okay. You want to check on that, Sarah? Thanks. After all, as you'll hear in the scripture reading, the, the sermon's all about the one sheep in the 99. So, anyways, I was like, oh, maybe God's sending me a message. Pray for me. Listen now for our reading for today from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and, and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he has found it, and when, and when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Most holy God, we are continuing on our journey of what disciples do as they follow you. Be with us this day as we talk about searching for you, about ourselves being sought after, and about what it means to do those things together. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. This is absolutely one of my favorite cartoons, most favorite cartoons of all time. Have you seen this one? Uh, have you found Jesus? Do you see him? He's right there behind the curtain. I love that cartoon. I love that cartoon. Have you found Jesus? For, for two millennia now, and, and longer before, pe the people of God have been searching for God, searching for ways to connect with God. And since Christ has come, we have been seeking out the way of Jesus. We have searched for meaning. We have searched for purpose for our lives. And we have searched for the lost and forsaken. And we ourselves at times have been lost. And we at times have felt forsaken. We all search for God. We, we all want to know the purpose for our lives. We all want to have meaning in our lives. And we desire to love and be loved. That's part of what it means to be created as the people of God. And you may be wondering what life is all about and if there is something more. And sometimes we just need that simple reminder that you are a child of God and that you were created for relationships with God. God created you, knows you, and loves you personally. When I think about the story of the sheep and the coin, sometimes it's important for us to remember we aren't God in that story. We aren't always the ones doing the searching. Sometimes we are the sheep that is lost. Sometimes we're the coin that has slipped through the crack and we can become so lost that we need someone else to come and find us. And so it's a good reminder to know that sometimes God 
is there seeking you and sending others to search for you. But also, sometimes in our searching, we can start to look so hard for God that we, we can neglect to see what is right there in front of our face. It reminds me of another cartoon that I used to love so much, and I, I don't have it here, but in our search for God, I remember this, this one where the person is looking high and low. They're looking out into the heavens, and they're, they're looking all around, uh, and they're looking in the trees and in the woods and all of these places, and they're on this park bench, and while they're looking all this, all this time, God is sitting right next to them and turns to them and says, hey, what are you looking for? And, and the whole time, God was just sitting there right next to them. There's a great scripture from 1 John that says, see what love the Father has given us, that we shall be called children of God, and that we are his. So even though sometimes we may be lost, even though sometimes we may spend our lives searching, our time in our lives searching, God still calls us children and says we are his. It's a good reminder, too, to remember that this is why we come to church. We come to church because it is in this place that we are given an opportunity to be with God. I often hear people say, well, I don't need to go to church to be with God. I can worship God on the golf course, or I can worship God when I'm walking through the park. And my question to them is, in all sincerity, I believe that you can do that, but do you? But do you? And this is the place where we create that space to be found, but to also search, to reconnect with God. I remember asking my dad when I was a little kid, Dad, why do we have to stand up and sing those songs in church? And specifically, I meant the doxology. After we do the prayer of confession and I pray for all of the bad things that I've done in my life, I ate the last piece of, of caramel apple turnover and I've uh, eaten the last Snickers bar in the freezer and I've done all these horrible, horrible things and I've prayed for them and then all of a sudden I get told you're forgiven and you have to stand up and praise God from whom all our glory be to the Father. And, I'm, and sometimes I'm still in the midst of confessing my sins and I don't feel like standing up and, and singing. And so why do we have to stand up and sing glory be to... And, and it's because at one point in time someone had the revelation that they too were a forgiven sinner and it was such an amazing feeling that they just popped up on their feet and said, I can't believe God could forgive me for those things and they were moved to stand and sing glory to God. It would be as if you wore a Hawkeye shirt to be a liturgist on Sunday and God still forgave you <laughs> and you would stand and sing to the glory of God. That wasn't written in there. Forgive me. But, but it, worship reminds us of those things. When we're, when we're seeking for God, when we feel lost, or, or when we have found God to, re, to remind us of what it's like to have been lost and then been found. And so we stand and we sing. And, and so it, it creates that space. That's why we gather here each week to remind ourselves of what it's, lost, what it's like to be lost and found. And sometimes we need to come because uh, we, we are people with a mission. And, and we ourselves are sent from this place to go and seek and save the lost too. But sometimes in that journey, uh, we forget to tether ourselves back to who we are and what, what we've been. I, I think of it like search and rescue. When I went into the Marines, I was guaranteed the 7200 field and and I was told I, I I told the marine recruiter I said I want to be um, a search and rescue guy I want to be the guy that jumps out of the helicopter into the water and pulls somebody from a crash site up out of the ocean right and, 
And he's like, I guarantee that you will be in that 7,200 field. And it turns out there's like 100, there's 7,200 fields, and and there's 99 of them within the 7,200 field. So I was was an air traffic controller, um, which is kind of like search and rescue. (laughs) And I said, I thought I'd be guaranteed the 7,200 field. And they said, you are, you're a 7,234. There's 7235, 7236, 7237. We guaranteed you'd be a 72 something. You are. But the thing with those search and rescue guys is they tether themselves to something safe, right? They have a home base. When you look at the fast water rescues, they, they tie themselves to the bridge to get into the water to save somebody. The guys from the helicopter are tethered to the helicopter, right? And that's what worship is for, is it tethers us to something where we remember who we are and what our foundation is. Because when we start on this journey to seek and save the lost, we can become worse than the thing we're trying to save. Does that make sense? So, I, I think about going in uh, to some of our culture wars wars that we're having today where uh, we're having battles about what it means to be kind, what it means to be faithful, what it means to be generous, what it means to be humble. And and I want to point fingers at people and say, you're not being Christian, right? And all of a sudden I realize it's kind of like I'm like Jesus Uh, with these Pharisees and the Sadducees where the Pharisees and Sadducees are saying I can't believe this guy eats with sinners and tax collectors right and I'm pointing fingers at other people saying see you can't be Christian if you like such and such and such and such and I become worse than the thing I'm trying to save because I'm trying to save these people from not being Christian and I'm not being Christian well I'm trying to seek and save those people because I've not become tethered to Jesus I've lost my grounding right and so worship is about re grounding us to those things. What's so funny in our story with Jesus is the Pharisees and the Sadducees start grumbling because the tax collectors and the sinners are eating with Jesus. And and I, I just have to wonder, one story later or so, when Jesus is eating with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, if the tax collectors or sinners are going, I can't believe Jesus is eating with them. We become lost ourselves sometimes when we go out searching to save the lost. And we end up becoming what we were fighting to save. There's a great saying about India, the country. And I think it's important for us to remember this too as Christians. This saying says, anything good you can say about India The opposite is true, too. And I think about us remaining tethered to our Christian values. Anything good you can say about us, the opposite is true, too. We can be just as lost as the ones we're trying to seek and save. And it's important to remember that. And so we stay humble by gathering and worshiping and confessing and praying. But I think those two things are when we are at our extremes, right? Of being the lost, of being the searching. But there's something beautiful that happens when we are absolutely at our best. When we are absolutely at our best as being Christians, we are seeking and saving the lost with God while at the same time finding ourselves being saved in that same journey. And I'll give you an example of this. There was a, another Presbyterian church in Charlotte, North Carolina, who invited Millard Fuller to come and be a keynote speaker for their church for a mission weekend. Millard Fuller was the person who started Habitat for Humanity, was a wealthy businessman, sold all of his stuff and, and took, took their family's fortunes and started Habitat for Humanity, and then later the Fuller Foundation, which our church went and helped with uh, for hurricane relief when we went down to Houston after Hurricane Harvey. And this, uh, this church decided, instead of having a professional preacher type 
introduce Millard Fuller to the congregation, they would have one of the people who they helped uh, build a house for. And so they had this lady named Melissa Cornet. And the, she was this tall and kind of gangly African-American woman and not a very accomplished speaker. And she was nervous. And she, she forgot to read the paper that she had written everything down on. And instead, she started talking directly to Millard Fuller, who was sitting on the front row. And she said to him, Mr. Fuller, you are the answer to my prayers. I grew up in low-income housing, a terrible a terrible place that was full of drugs, it was full of violence, and I wasn't nobody, and I knew I would never be nobody, and I had my son, and I prayed that my son would be somebody, but I knew that he would be nobody if we stayed where we were, and then I got on my knees, and I prayed for help, and you came. And they gave me a chance to build a house with a Habitat for Humanity, and you are the answer to my prayer. I got to build a house, and we got a nice house. And she said, before I moved in, when my boy had started school, they told me that he was too slow, that he couldn't learn like the other kids, and that he wasn't going to make it. He was going to be held behind, and he never smiled, and he was never happy. But then we moved into our new house, and he had his own room, and he began to shine that day. And he got to the place where he had fun, and he learned, and he started making good grades. And now he's in the third grade. And the other day, my boy said to me, he said, Mama, I know what I'm going to be when I grow up. And she said, what's that? What do you want to be? And he said, I'm going to be a doctor. He's making straight A's, and he smiles. And he's, she said, Mr. Fuller, you have been the answer to my prayer. And little did she know that she was the answer to Mr. Fuller's prayers because he was questioning whether all of this work that he was done was worth it. And so in the middle of him seeking and saving the lost, he himself was being saved. And at our best as disciples, that's what's happening. We find ourselves seeking God's will and being saved as we're being sent to help others do the same. And so together, we seek and save the lost as we ourselves are found. May this word strengthen us and encourage us to continue to seek God and to seek one another as we search for God's will. Amen.
let us remain standing and say together what we believe with the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As people of faith, we are encouraged to pray without ceasing, so let us take our prayers to the Lord. Let us pray. Most holy God, you came to seek and save the lost. You loved the world so much that you sent your only son to come and live and die for us. And it was you yourself who was willing to crucify your own wrath and take on our burdens. You took the sins of the world and you crucified them. And you encouraged us to, to then go and proclaim your love, to live in a simple way of peace. Most holy God, your ways are easy. Your yoke is light. You say to love one another as you have loved us. Help us live this simple way. We pray for this world, O oh Lord, where there is war, famine, and disease. Help us to continue to work together with you to bring cures, to share food, and to make peace. We pray for our nation, O oh Lord, for our president, for our leaders, for our differences. Help us to find those common good things that unite us more than divide us. Help us live together in the way of peace and goodwill, taking care of the children, and the poor, and the elderly, of serving one another and building up the common good. We give you thanks for this community, for those who live and work here together. Help us see each person we encounter on a daily basis as another child of God. Each do the respect and reverence as someone being created in your image. We pray for our dear loved ones who have illnesses and sicknesses, who face the daily battle of the aging bodies, declining health, we pray, O oh Lord, that you could work wonders in them beyond all they may ever dream or hope, so that they may feel like they are the ones who were lost but have been found. We pray for the continued blessings upon this church, for the ministry starting, for the confirmands beginning their confirmation class today, for their lifelong journey of faith, for the revolution kids, coming and being shaped to share your love and shine your light for the deacons and the elders and stewardship and buildings and grounds and parish and life for the many many people who give each week so that we can have worship and fellowship and education we thank you for the many blessings that this church has been able to share through you as we seek your face and as we seek to share your love and shine your light. We ask that you bless these prayers and guide us in all things. 
ourselves in Christ's name. We pray this as Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand and sing. Good job, Kimmy. <laughs> you know that song? I like that song. Friends, go from this place and have courage to share the love of God, to, to shine the light of God in all things, and hold on to what is good. Return no person evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering. Honor all people, for we are all connected by the gift of the Holy Spirit. So may the love of God the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be known to you and those you love now and forever. Hallelujah. Amen.